my name is Tina Fierce One, and don't forget this episode is proudly sponsored and brought to you by none other than Nutri Cologne Cleanser. Yes, all the info you need about them is all up on your screen right now. And in case you want to reach out to them, you can always just hit us up on www.nutricolonecleanser.com. And of course, not forgetting our other proud sponsor who is Nita's Avenue. If you're a lady, even a man, and you love genuine good cosmetic products from the UK and the USA, they are your people. That is www.nittersavenue.com. Reach out to them in case you need anything from there. Now, that said, welcome to these My Random Thoughts. Okay, now back to the things that are just petty. Hey, bruh, did you see that whole conversation on, um, I think it was on Twitter and on Facebook. So apparently there's this girl who works on a local television station. She was doing a story about MC Katz and his new catch, and apparently she could have said something derogative. When she did say something derogative, MC Katz responds, he was online, and he goes like, yo, I have a full life with me. I mean, it's not right for you people to talk about me like that. I'm going to sue. And then he's tagging all these different organizations and all of that. I'm like, hmm. If you ask me, was the presenter wrong for saying what she said? Yeah, but no. But then, yeah, she could have found a better way to put it. She could have found a better way to put it. My thing, though, is, eh, you know, every time Katz is offended by someone referring to his status, he has to tag in all these organizations. Anonya Gundi, Anonya Plagachich. Does he want to be an ambassador or something? That's not me being insensitive. I just need to understand why. Because you know your truth. You're living in your truth. You've decided to move past forward in life and show people that you can actually live a fulfilling life. Why would you let small nothing, small nobodies rattle you up to this point? Why? The whole country knows it. You told us. We were enraged. We made peace with it. We are now happy for you that you are happy. Can you just stop paying attention to everything? Imagine if Magic Johnson would be offended every time someone reminded him that he's HIV positive. Being HIV positive is not the end of the world. You still have a regular life. But every time you remind us that, that you are offended by us saying it, that, that, I think that in itself is what creates the stigma. For me, you know, just, just ease up on this issue. Just live your life, enjoy it. Don't mind what the world is saying. I came hard at him when this whole issue happened because for me, I was looking at it in the sense of I have seen you, I have, I've seen your life, you know? And for it to go down like that, that's what made me angry. But right now that we're out of that toxic place and you're in a happy space, I think you need to stop paying attention to certain things. Just say it. Woo! Guys, the whole Uganda maze and Kenya saga, I still don't understand it. Is it real? Is it a saga? Is it not? Because <laughs> there's so much bullshit happening in my country. I can't keep up. So, first story that goes in is like, the trucks and trucks of our maze stopped from entering Kenya. Next thing I know, I'm watching our parliamentarians going at it in parliament and saying we shall retaliate with what i don't know then next thing i know kenya is saying but we did not say that and then uganda is like so who said that the next thing i know uganda is calling all the maize association guys to meet up and register i'm like wait so is the story true or not because if it is true, this is something that we shouldn't sweep under the rug. If the, if the maize that we are consuming is not good for our health and could be detrimental to our health as citizens, it is something that really needs to be discussed. But then again, like it is in my country, we make noise about things for five minutes and drop it. And drop it. That's how it was dropped. My issue was, I thought us as a, as a population were going to be like, first leave Kenya out of this, let's talk about us, is what we're consuming Right for us. Anyway, so we are not sure what it what happened, but that too happened. I, I can't even keep up with this. I can't. Can't. Dear mm Katolubuama, -hmm. <clears throat> this is an open letter to you, Katolubuama. To my dear to Sabatata. Oh, Zoom, you're not going to be a good 
I'm not going to say with you what you call yourself as a being. Or demo baka in bit dramatic tazi or what day could national theater or something. You've been watching this guy's interviews that once he's been doing, like I know he's a comic and all of that, but it reached a point where I was like, okay, uncle. He is jumping on anything and everything. What does he want? Relevance. He's still angry that Bam Kubakalu. But your kid is a your kid is What's all this slander? What is all this slander? Katolo Mama, please go entertain yourself or come entertain us, but don't entertain us in this way. We are politics. We have to demo back, back, and do chit. Speak on other things like eh eh. Nga, you want to remember such? It was also in these three weeks that I was away that Uganda finally launched launched its COVID vaccination. Ah, AstraZeneca, baby, we are here. And of course, you all saw the Kaviro video that went that the conspiracy was rife that ah, Dr. Rusachin did not get it. She did not get it. Look at the injection. Then don't look at it. Did it enter? No, it didn't enter. I think she squeezed it on the cotton ball. No, it could have been water. I'm like, hey. Why do we have trust issues as a people? I swear I have never seen a people, a population that is, it has zero trust in its government. And then Bambi, I tell her to come back as always and tell us on, on social media, the real video is here. Don't saying I did not get it. I'm like, eh? It has to be really bad, eh? For even the minister they are talking about to come out and clarify that it is not the truth or that it is true. Eh, anyway. She got her shot. If you're asking me, they rolled out vaccination. First thing we saw, they said um, the older age, the, the older people are going to get it first. People with underlying conditions, some teachers, who else? Journalists? Because I'm trying to understand why on the very first day of COVID launching, Kana Rizas was there getting a shot. It, does he have an underlying condition we don't know about? My bad. Which one? Somebody do that research. You need to know why Kanari got his shot first. We really need to know. But that's besides the point. They, they put that out. Now, next thing we know, our president is doing a... Monsonye, what do I mean to be you know, get up. Next thing we know, the president comes on a press conference and they're asking him, how come he hasn't yet gotten the shot? We have seen Kagame get it. We've seen all these world leaders get the shot. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stood there, His Excellency, the president of Uganda, and he was like, well, ooh, me and my wife are not yet sure. We have not yet decided on which one. We should get, uh, but because we have everything in order and the press, it is not a rush for us to get it. We are still trying to see which vaccine we should get. I was like, oh, what? Play it back. So let me get this right. The president accepted and the ministry not to get us Pfizer or Moderna or uh, the Johnson & Johnson one, or any of them, they, they decided to get the AstraZeneca one, right? They felt that is what is going to be right for our population. Ye people, right, they actually even got it. But now that it's in the country, and people are starting to get vaccinated, the leader of the country is asked, how come he hasn't yet gotten a shot? And his best response is he is trying to decide which shot to get. Make it make sense, fam. So does that make us trust the one we got? Because, I mean, if we're getting AstraZeneca, uh, I thought you're Ugandan like us. Get the AstraZeneca. I don't think he even needed to see, like, think that one through. But anyway, fast forward a couple of days back, he took the shot. He took the AstraZeneca one, did he? You sure? Who's sure? Put your hand up if you know he got the AstraZeneca one. No, no, no. Put your hands up if you know he got it. I watched him get it. I know he got it, but I don't know what he got. He got the shot. Shot of what? We don't know. But he got it. So let it rest. Come out. All of those who need to get their shots, please go and get your shots. This issue is not playing around now. Still on our president. Bagai. When Bagamba Uganda Woma, when Bagamba Uganda Tokota Simbike. This is what I mean. Story dropped last week 
that a stat house gardener was fleeing with how much money? 30 million shillings, which they use for groceries a week at stat house. I was like, Linda, Colinda, Colinda, Costone, Soko, Jize, Yogambiachi. Now, Gambo Musanja were better off to more call a shopping here state house, which is worth 30 million every week. Yaba double owner, Zo, Obaya Buse owner, Zo, Obaya Zibia, all we know he is in custody. I'm like, Oh, ho, 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 yo, fam, 30 million. Dear President, are you people eating gold gold covered chicken drumsticks? Wait, is gold leaf a permanent on your meals? Like what are they eating for 30 million? How big? I know the state house is big, you people. I know. I Ibra. Why you can say one katale ngo y name it wal on kaga? Why you can say kono gule nyanya ze Uganda ze mitwalo kumi? Emit emitwalo kumi nyanya ze mitwalo kumi zi zo kole la state house and tebe ne state house e, e, na kasero. So that million. I was like, dang my president is eating too well for a man who sat on national television during a global pandemic and weighed kaunga for us. Oh the double standards, Mr. President. <laughs> you sat on national television. With a weighing scale, oka kwa tomsio ba kure tera kahunga kago yuze kanti gambo mi nyangore ba tomsio ba kwa weighing scaleu watsara kahunga watujira tu ina kari atuti and yet you are eating thirty million a week. I feel betrayed. I thirty million. Ta how many hens are those? Okay, how many goats? So should we take it that in state house they slaughter a kraal of goats every week? That a million. That a million. And you still manage to give us rotten beans, spoiled milk during a global pandemic. And we shouldn't. That a million. There you were. And by the way, that is just for one state house. The state house and TV, then there are all these presidential lodges all over the country. Bob Biru ya abweri kuchu. But, um, teacher me, I, <laughs> just to put the queries of the citizen down, dear Mr. President, yo, ni kaguta mseveni, ambadeze saba. Just in Sabab Sabi. Njagala bandete bandambu zeko state household naku. Just the kitchen area. I don't want, I don't, I will not be in the meetings. I don't want to, just bantuale mchiyungu. Olu naku. I tell, please, I want them to invite me on the day when they are doing the grocery shopping. Because, eh, eh. Na yuma muma nyitate milioni muwe muwiki. Every wiki. It is not fair. It is not. It is not at all. That a million a week on food, on food, and you want to tell me to wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. and go to work and earn 500k to pay rent, pay school fees, medication, and lifestyle, and then you want to call me lazy? Huh? You are spending 30 million on food, and then you're calling me lazy for not knowing how to spread thin 500 things was awkward. Mm -mm. That is just disrespectful to my hustle. How many people do you know here who have been working for the past 35 years of their life? And 30 mil is not on food. 30 mil is on land. Hey, you got hungry, want to go to state house and eat their food. Ibra. Oh, but so get to you have to go to your Nobody gets A subway. Shabwe kwa taku jisera. Our president has cows in Rajtura. A subway should be for free. 30 mil. Oh, I will never understand these things of the state. But very here, you know, HOJ didn't I think I could be an expenditure state, but I tell you, I have a watch out your inauguration. And I could be in Nene. I tell you, we are going to launch a satellite in space. Hey, we are.
For more jokes, dial 0800 Uganda. But we are. We are. Ata tuge nana kwe kwa lera vaksini. Muju jukira. Temu jukira. Hey, I have daka photo. Don't you remember when the president came on national television and told us that we are going to make our own COVID-19 vaccine. It will be able to withstand all the COVID-19 strains and, and we shall be able to test it on mice by June. Hello, government of Uganda. This is April coming your way soon. June, are we? Uh, man. But you see, I think that the difference between Africa and the rest of the world is one, priorities. I think the rest of the world has bigger priorities. Africa's priorities are different. Totally different. T totally. In Africa, you will not have roads, but your president will build a road for a neighboring country. In Africa, case in point, Uganda, right? Uganda. We export electricity to Kenya. Hmm? Fabag exporting. But we have load shedding daily where they export the electricity that is uganda it is priorities for africa i have understood it and that is why i have come to a conclusion i am in a toxic relationship with this country i need a divorce or a, we could either see a therapist i don't know we need a therapist for this relationship me and this country i'm done i can't keep up Woo! priorities <laughs> oh, yeah. What else are they spending on soon? They are going to spend on something. Yes, they, they are bound to spend on something at some point. Some point. Yeah. Conversation here, I'm so mad. I'm going to go and get some money. They were telling us how they are going to help with this, with that. Hmm. Are the radios ready? Yeah, yeah. Not to a radio. Native. Scholastic materials. Dear Ministry of Education, what are? How's it going? Hmm? Okay. This proud episode was sponsored by Nita's Avenue. For all of you looking for genuine cosmetic products from the UK, from Canada, and from the US of A, it's quite simple. Go down to www.nittersavenue.com. And of course, all their information is on your screen right now. Not forgetting our other sponsor who's been with us forever. Yes, Nutricolone Cleanser. For all of you who don't know what Nutricolone Cleanser is, well, it's a cleanser for your colon, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's what it does. Just visit www.nutricolonecleanser.com and you will actually find all the information you need to know. It's good, it's healthy, it's herbal. You know, check them out and most definitely order yourself a pack. For now, though, ha, it was... Now let's just take it randomly. Now this is really, really big random. Megan and Harry. It was in this, these same three weeks <laughs> that the big opera interview came out and the world was like, oh, no, Meghan and Harry had to go through that. Oh my God, everybody was enraged. Twitter, Twitter was mad. Black Twitter was losing it. I was sitting at home, sipping my water and saying, wait, let me get this straight, fam. So a monarchy, that was part of slavery and colonizing Africa to this net. Y'all is surprised that they have race issues, that they are racial. Oh, wow. Y'all think... And everybody's asking me my take on Megan and the whole situation. This is what I'm going to say for Megan. Uh, you see, I like, I like Americans for one thing. Americans have that thing, it is called, I am American. It is past patriotism. It is something else. An American will walk into the room and assume importance just because they are American. <laughs> so, for Megan to walk into the monarchy like that and expect to be treated different. <laughs> uh, what do I know? I am just an African girl looking at the world. What can I say? But my favorite part of this whole Meghan and Harry situation, because I don't want to get into it, seeing Prince Harry go against the status quo and just throw a middle finger to the, royal, to the royals after the ish that they put his mother through, I'm here for it. I was like, go Harry, piss them off. I was happy. 
But Megan's situation though, ah, uh ah, -uh. uh -huh. How are you going to speak that a family is bad when your own family has a truckload of issues? You want to criticize the monarchy. Now you have to understand, I am not for the monarchy. I don't even give two shits about them. Because this is a black sister, we got to stand with her, but we have to use it with some logic. We, we need some logic here. Come on now, Megan, come on. Your own family of this, like, like your own side of the family is a whole different story. But you expect Harry's family to be perfection? Nah. But, you see, one thing I hate about lately is that the internet is very, very sensitive. See this conversation I just had right now? Someone could actually cut it out and send it out and the bots will come for me. And they'll come for me. They'll be like, you're siding with the white people. No, I'm not siding with anybody. I'm just saying, man, this whole issue is just laughable. It's all laughable, it's funny. For her to act like she didn't see that coming, like I never bothered to Google him. He is the heir to the throne of a reigning monarch. Okay, not really an heir to the throne. He's like a spare, but hey, his brother is the heir. How can you not Google him? How can you not know the queen don't like this or the queen don't like that or the people are like this or they're like that? Mm. But of course, everyone is just going to choose the whole, Harry is such a loving man. He's standing by his woman and they're holding hands together. I give it five years. Yes, I do. Five. Five years. Five years we can have this conversation. Then when the five years elapse and it happens, then I will tell you exactly what my thoughts were. But I love Megan. I love all my black sisters. I love all my black people who are actually facing racial issues and racial injustices. I do, and I feel for you. Don't ask me to talk about the satellite station. There are very many countries that actually have them. We have Saudi, Sudan has it, Kenya has one, Algeria has one, uh, Nigeria has one, South Africa also has one. It's not a bad initiative, but then again, like I said, priorities, Uganda, where are your priorities? We have so many things that need... Satellite Nyambeji. The internet in this country is still shitty. It's still shitty. We have not yet. I think it's in years ago, Uganda. We like we can wake up one day and we are like internet in Uganda, satellites. We are like yes, we are going everything. And then they just do the launch, and choop, choop. Next thing you will hear is like the money that was allocated for the satellite went missing, but we are doing an OPM situation. Leave the damn set lights, we don't need them. Build us some good roads. Eh? Muli kuwanika mbu mwagala kuwanika set light. Mwala vye kwa oxygen tanks ya ziri mmaruali. Ibra kafana nyogenda kaba teda yo. Oxygen tanks ya ziri mmaruali lo gafi. Mwagala kuwanika set light. Mwagala kuwanika set light. Tuka kechi rudu. Otuwala yo mwade wo. Neba kugambida wa. Tetuina cha muko le na mtuwale ya walala. We are going to launch a satellite. Because in Abakoba is the ICT minister. Fam, I wanted to talk about, now this is me randomly thinking. This is why it's going to get quite interesting for me today. As much as I've given you my opinion on all those things. Have you people noticed how sensitive the internet is. Everybody on the internet is sensitive. But my question is, we are very reactive to all these things. When you talk about the LGBT community, reaction. When you talk about the rest situation, reaction. When you talk about police brutality, reaction. When you talk about how somebody's child wants to wear their hair long and not short, reaction. Everybody is reacting, reacting, reacting. Why are we this sensitive? Why are we so sensitive? My biggest, uh, I, was, I was talking to somebody and uh, there's this story in Kenya uh, I think my Kenyan brothers and sisters, if you're watching this, you'll probably attest to it. So apparently the story goes like, there's this radio hosts. So they were talking about a situation. The situation was, apparently, a guy sent a chick 
transport money to come through. Check came through, right? So when check comes through, she refuses to give up, you know, the cookies. She jumps. So when she jumps to give out the cookie, they get into a scuffle. As the scuffle happens, sadly, Chick falls from the balcony to the ground. Done. Next thing they know, the conversation, that is what happened. So the radio hosts are trying to have a conversation around it. And they go about it and they're like, you know what, here we have to blame two people. First of all, we're going to blame the man. Second of all, we're going to blame the woman. They tried to play it so fair, but guess what happened? Next thing they know, they're taking them off air. Feminism, feminism nowadays is just something else. They're taking them off air. They're telling them they said something wrong. It affects other people. It affects them like this. It's doing like this. You're being so misogynistic and all of that. My thing though is, in that situation, if you ask me who I would blame between the man and the woman, I would also blame both of them. One, you, the guy who is sending transport money. Honestly speaking, do yourself a favor. If you feel the only way you're going to get laid is by coercing a girl with some car money, they know you ain't shit as a man. That's it. Because when a girl wants to see you, she's not going to ask for transport money. When a girl wants you, really you, she's not going to ask you for transport money. She's going to come to you. So clearly you know that the reason why she's there is simply because she needed the money. Do yourself a favor. Walk away from a situation like that. Get you a real woman. Okay? Secondly, for the girls, why are you being this cheap? Why are you being as cheap as transport money? Transport money in Gabalete Davis Bubinji. Transport money has been the cause of rap. Transport money has been the cause of Unwanted pregnancies. Can't transport him Why are you Ugandan girls? And I don't know. You're getting Ugandan girls, not the Kenyan ones. Ugandan girls and transport money. It is going to be your undoing. Anyway, so the whole conversation goes on. <laughs> what kills me though is the radio hosts are actually taken off air, first suspended. After being suspended, they're actually um, <clears throat> fired. My thing is, why is it so hard for us to have these conversations without one party feeling offended? Why are we hiding all these conversations under the table? When we start up a conversation about transport money like that, like the way those men tried to or the way I tried to explain it, instead of you people coming into the conversation and saying you know what we need to understand both parties let's really talk about this when we talk about race when we talk about the racial problems in our lives and in the world instead of having the conversation as soon as we start to have the conversation people are reacting but nobody wants to have the honest conversation it's baffling me it is baffling me when we talk about marriage and infidelity and why it is failing People don't want to talk about the conversation. They want to start, bring it up, but they don't want to have the honest conversation. They want to react. So let me ask internet, when are we going to have these very, very bad conversations? When are we going to address them? As offensive as they are to one party or the other. If you notice the reason why all these things are still going on is because of this. When we start to have the conversation, you react. You get offended. Nobody wants to hear the other one out. Shots, 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 you fire, I fire. Maybe if we could actually sit down and have honest, open, uh, like uncensored, no holds barred about these things, then maybe we can work towards getting out of them. Man, I was... When you bring up the LGB, uh, when you bring up the LGBT community, very sensitive topic, too sensitive. It's too sensitive that the conversation has not been heard to its entirety. It's too sensitive that the conversation shall only be heard from the LGBT's part of view. That's how sensitive it is. I love my LGBT community. I love them so much. The beautiful folks. But why are we only having the conversation from your side? Why don't you want the other people who are not part of your community to also say how they feel without you feeling offended that that's how they feel? Right? When we talk black and white, 
Why do we, the black people, want to be very, 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 very reactionary and offended before we can listen to what this white person wants to say? And if you're a white person and you feel it's the black person doing that, why can't you honestly have them say what they have to say, react and say what you have to say and let them react to and keep the conversation open? Why is it the moment the topic is brought up, instead of us having the conversation, we are just reacting? The conversation about gender. Oh, I'm going to go there too. Let's be honest. Let's have these conversations. Because, case in point, everybody wants to raise their child how they want to raise their child. Ain't nobody going to stop you from doing that. It's your prerogative. It's your right. It's what you want. It's how they are. We love it. We're proud of you. But if you're going to tell me that my child is going to turn on the television and he is never going to know if... Tweety, Tweety Bird is female or male, but is being referred to as them. You're confusing my child. Because I'm raising my child a certain way. Why should I only listen to your conversation? What about us who don't want our kids to call them they or them? But ah, it's too sensitive, isn't it? The only conversation that can be had should be from their opinion. What about me? Who doesn't want my child to begin getting confused by saying, what is, why does he call himself them? What about me? Who has told my kids there are two genders in life? It's male and it's female. But we're too sensitive. We're going to react to that. When somebody comes out and says, look here, can't we stop? Why are we ruining the kids? I am so angry because I feel like they're taking away my child, my child, my my own, my kids' childhood. You're introducing things like gender fluidity. Some of us are raising our kids without gender fluidity, but we cannot have the conversation because it's too offensive to the people introducing the fluidity. Look here, we ain't got. Personally, I I don't have nothing about the fluidity. I believe everybody's entitled to what they want to be and everybody should be who they want to be. But do not make it in such a way that if I speak up on how I want mine to be, it's offending you more than it's offending me. Let's have these conversations. Right? Okay. So Lil Nas went and did a video. Dropped this week. Montero. Watched it. Disgusted. He came out and he said, it's not my job to raise your kids. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And if you feel like my music is not what your kids should be watching, then don't introduce it to them. I'm like, okay. Now that's a good conversation starter right there. Using that same energy. Can we now address it with that same energy? Can we now be open enough to say, okay, look here, LGBT community, we ain't got nothing about you. We love you. Do your thing, but you see, um, you're influencing other people while you're doing you. And we, the people who are raising kids, are now confused. We don't know what to do anymore. Am I the only parent who is confused now on where the conversation should go with the kids? Back then it was the sex talk. It was the girl and the boy when they have sex and that was the birds and the bees. Oh no, the conversation is bigger now. We have to tell our kids about gender fluidity. We have to tell our kids about uh, the LGBT community. We have to make our kids understand that there's something like you can go to school and somebody decides that they're called a they or them. We have to make sure that we teach them enough sensitivity to actually respect those people without being offended because they are infringing on their own rights as a person too because they also have a right to be who they are. We don't want to have these conversations. My name is Tina Fierce One from me and the team. Peace.